Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. It seems like from reading a lot of the comments that some of the people that watch this channel have never owned an electric vehicle before. So it's a little unclear how charging for an electric vehicle works for them. So I wanted to make a video that talks about the different ways of charging an electric vehicle and the Aptera. And it also highlights one of the major advantages that Aptera has over other um, electric vehicles when you understand the different ways of charging an electric vehicle. So this is a little graphic that I found that talks about the three levels of charging. Uh, there's level one, level two, and level three. And so level one and level two are alternating current. And then level three is what we call DC fast charge. Now the difference between the AC charging and the DC charging is that the AC charging, you just give alternating current to the car and the car has an onboard charger that determines how fast they can charge it. So um, most cars have a level two charger that maxes out at like six kilowatts or some of them are more. Um, I think some of the newer cars have much higher um, onboard chargers and they can charge at like 40 kilowatts. Um, but most cars are around six kilowatts uh, or six or seven kilowatts of onboard charging. Now level one is the easiest kind of charging and this one is where you plug in to a regular receptacle and this you know we all know what this looks like in, in America this is the regular receptacle it's 120 volts and about it's usually on a 15 amp breaker at the most and this plug is called a NEMA 515 plug 15 uh, basically saying how many amps it can carry. And when you buy an electric vehicle, they usually include a level one EVSC and the EVSC stands for electric vehicle supply equipment. So it's basically a charging cable that you plug into the wall and then it has a J1772 plug on the other side that plugs into your car. And most cars will, will come with this. In fact, I think all electric cars come with this. And I suspect that that at Terra will also come with this. And that thing basically looks like this. Um, it, this is one that you can buy from Amazon at, for uh, 149, but basically it, it comes like this and it has a plug on one end right here and then the J1772 on the other end. And yeah, you just plug this into the standard outlet and the, you plug the other end into the car. Now the downside of level one is that it's very slow. Um, since most of these breakers are on 15 amp breakers, the charger usually pulls 10 to 12 amps and you get about 1.4 kilowatts of power. Uh, and in most cars, it gives you this amount of range per hour. Now level two, you can also install this into your house and this can be relatively straightforward or a little more complicated depending on how your house is wired up. A lot of people, so, um, the level two chargers are also the chargers that you see most commonly out in public chargers. So they will have um, like, this is an example of a charge point charger. You like put your credit card or your, your, um, your phone with the charge point app on it and you disconnect here. This is a J1772 plug and you plug that into the car. But you can also do this uh, at home and there's two ways of doing it. Uh, one way is if your garage is already wired up for like an electric dryer and many um, garages are wired up for an electric dryer, then it's pretty easy to just buy the uh, a level two charging cable for it and you're good to go. And these are the most common. Uh, this is a uh, NEMA 1030 plug. And if you're kind of in an older house, this is the kind of plug that you're going to have. It's a 240 volt on a 30 amp breaker and then if you have a newer one this is the 1430 uh, plug and this is also a 30 amp plug that is in some of the newer houses and this one also you use for an electric dryer so if you have a laundry machine set up that's in your garage it's very common to have one of these two plugs and if you have that you can just plug in um, buy one of these things and uh, plug in, uh, this is a NEMA 1030 plug, 
and this the other end is the J1772. Now, if you don't have one of these, and then these things max out at, at 16 amps. So 16 amps at 240 volts, that's about 3.3 um, kilowatts of power. And if you have one of those uh, electric dryers, you can just buy um, this for $200 and plug it in and you're good to go. And this is currently the setup that I use at my house for my EV. Um, I happen to have an electric uh, dryer plug and I just plug one of these in and it works pretty good. Now, let's say you don't have, um, you don't have a plug in your garage and then you're gonna have to hire a electrician to bring in um, a 200 volt supply into your uh, garage and then put in a breaker. If you're gonna do that, you're probably gonna just want a, um, a 50 amp breaker on it then you can charge at uh, 32 amps, which is the next level of level. There's several um, amounts of power that you can get in level two. And if you do that, you're gonna have to pay an electrician probably about $1,000 to run the line, put in a circuit breaker. Uh, and then you have to buy an EVSC kind of like this, which can run up to like $700 if you have it integrated, or you can get one for about $300, uh, 350 if you just wanna plug in one. And then this one will give you 6.6 .6 kilowatts, which is the usual amount of power that most of the commercial level two chargers give. So this is usually at home. If you have a dryer, you can run it at 3.3 kilowatts. And if you run your own service, you can run it at probably 6.6 .6 kilowatts. And then there's even fancier things that we can talk about at the end of this. Um, at the end of this. And then there's DC fast charging. Now, no one's really going to install this at home. These things are extremely expensive. And DC fast charging does not use the car's onboard charger. The, the fast charging box is the charger, and controls the charger. They talk to each other and deliver the amount of charge that they want. And this one charges directly into the, the battery since it's DC and the battery is DC. And they start at 50 kilowatts and they go up to like 300 kilowatts. Most of them are 50 to 150, uh, most of the ones that you find. And they look like this. This is an Electrify America charger, and you'll see here there's a CCS port, which is going to be, which is kind of becoming the standard and the dominant plug for DC fast charging. And this is a Chatamo plug, which is kind of dying. There's not too many cars using Chatamo. In fact, I don't think any new cars are using Chatamo anymore. This was kind of the old Japanese standard that was on um, a couple of the early Nissans and such, but that's not really um, a very common thing. And then here's a plug kind of interesting graphic showing all the different kinds of plugs. So here is the uh, NEMA 515. This is the common plug that we see everywhere in America. This is the 120 volt 15 amp plug. And then this is the uh, 1030. This is the one used for electric dryers in older houses. And the 1430 is the electric uh, dryer in the newer houses. And then if you get a 50 amp service installed by an electrician, this will usually cost you about $1,000, 500 to 1,000, depending on where you live and how you can get a 1450 plug. This is the most common plug for that. And then you can put a 32 amp charger into this thing. All right. So let's look at uh, I just made this um, graphic talking about the charging rates of these various levels for different cars. So I just kind of randomly picked some cars, Aptera, Model 3, Lucid Air, Ionic 5, Model S Plaid, VW ID4, Rivian, and then the F-150 Lightning and the Hummer EV, and then listed their efficiency at watt hours per mile. Um, so you can see that the Aptera is probably like two and a half times as efficient as uh, Model 3 and about almost six times as efficient as a Hummer EV. This is just a monster of a car. The battery pack in this thing weighs more than the Aptera, almost twice as much the Aptera, actually. So it's a huge car, and just because it's so massive, um, it just it's just not as if, not very efficient. Now, if you have a level one charger, remember this is the charger that you just plug into a regular outlet that everyone has in their garage. And if you live in an apartment, you might have these plugs like under in the in the poles next to your parking uh, structures. These are, this is the plug that's available everywhere. At this thing, most cars will charge between two, so this is, if you have a Hummer, this will give you two and a half miles of range per hour. And if you have a Model 3, it'll give you five and a half 
uh, miles of range. However, if you have an Aptera, it gives you almost 14 miles of range per hour off of a normal plug. Um, and then if you have a electric dryer in your garage, you'll get this kind of low level two, 3.3 kilowatt level two. This will give you 32 miles per hour uh, of added range um, and about six miles per hour. If you get, if you pay an electrician to give you a 50 amp service into your garage and install a 6.6 .6 kilowatt level two, or this is the most common level two that you'll find at commercial level two chargers. Um, almost all the ones in my area are either 3.3 or 6.6. Um, you can get 64 miles of range out of an Aptera. So let's say that I go to dinner, I plug in, I spend two hours at dinner, I can get 130 miles of range added to the Aptera over the course of two hours of just like watching a movie or going to dinner. Um, if you're in a Hummer, in those two hours, you're going to get um, 20 miles, 22 miles, which is not a lot. So like you could, like I could theoretically go to LA and then get enough charge uh, to make that round trip over a dinner or dinner and a movie, that kind of thing. Then DC fast charging at 50 kilowatts in Aptera. Now this is not entirely accurate because the DC fast charging, it only charged at the full rate um, during the, in the uh, beginning part of the charge cycle. As, it get, as the battery gets very full, it decreases the charge rate because of the thermal load. Um, on the vehicle to protect the uh, to protect the battery, it'll slow down. But if it could charge at the full uh, rate, you're going to get almost 500 miles of range per hour in Aptera, whereas in a Hummer, you're going to only get 80 miles per uh, hour in a Hummer EV. Now, if you go to a 150 kilowatt DC fast charger, now we know the Aptera can't do this based on its um, battery technology that we know. It can only do 1500 kilowatts. Um, maybe the 100 kilowatt pack will be able to do this because it has more cells in parallel. We don't know, but we know the 40 kilowatt battery can only do 50 kilowatt uh, DC fast charging, which gives you 500. If it could do 150 kilowatt DC, it would give you 1500 uh, miles of range per hour. And then you'll see that with the Hummer, even at the 150 kilowatt hour, you're still getting less uh, hours excuse me, less miles per hour of charge than you would get in, Ap in an Aptera in the slowest DC fast charging. And here's the most important part of the whole thing. Let's say that you all you have is access to um, this plug. This is the only thing you have access to. You, have, you don't have access to anything else. You don't really want to pay an electrician. Let's say you're renting a house or you're renting an apartment. This is all you got access to. Um, then Overnight, and I, cons I consider it overnight as 12 hours of charging. So you, you, you plug in at 7 p.m. and you, you plug out at 7 a.m. So if you have 12 hours of charging, you would get 165 miles just out of a standard plug from uh, in an Aptera. Now, if you have um, any of these other cars, you're getting about 50 miles to like 30 miles. And if you have any kind of real commute or use of a car, you aren't going to, this is not sustainable. You're probably going to um, drive more than this on average per day because on the weekends you might go on some longer trips. Maybe you do, you go out to dinner or a movie or something after work. You know, you're going to drive more than this in a day. Uh, you have to go to the store because most people uh, commute like 40 miles, but they do other driving too. So this is not going to be sustainable for any other car. But very few people are going to drive more than 165 miles a day. So you could totally make it work with an Aptera. Then this is not including the range you would get from the solar, which is you tack on another 40 miles under optimal conditions to this, which makes it about 200 miles a day. If you have an electric dryer in your garage, then you, you could fill up, you could basically fill up from empty every night on an Aptera. Um, and if you had a, uh, if you had the 6.6 .6 level two, yeah, you would, you could fill up the, uh, ridiculous 100 kilowatt hour battery almost on level two every night. So as you can see, um, with an Aptera, you basically don't need to buy any equipment for charging. With every other vehicle, you, you have to buy at least a level two charger to make it viable um, 
at home. At the This is like the bare minimum to make it work. With an Aptera, you can just get by with a charger that will most likely be included in the, in the, with the car and with a standard plug. In fact, these large vehicles like the F-150 Lightning, they realize that even with a standard level two, you're really not gonna be able to get the use out of the vehicle like you need. And Ford is making this Forge Charge Station Pro. I have no idea how much they're gonna charge for this thing. I'm guessing it's a lot. I would guess it's thousands of dollars. Um, I would guess it's at least a thousand dollars. It's gotta be more than a thousand dollars. Um, because the regular 32 amp chargers are running about six, seven hundred dollars. This is an 80 amp level two charger. It is a ridiculous amount of power, and you you will have to get an electrician to run this. And this is their little um, charge station pro. This is their specs for licensed electricians to look at. They want someone to install a hundred amp circuit breaker and run the line to the garage. So. If you look at that, the, the problem with this is that a lot of houses don't even go up to 100 amps. If you go to your breaker and look at your breaker in your house, you'll see that there's a main breaker and it'll tell you how many amps there are. Some older houses are running at 60 amps. The whole house runs on 60 amps. Uh, that's pretty rare nowadays. Uh, but you can see that 100 amps would be more than your entire house. So you'd have to run an entire new service to your house to, to get this. Um, I looked at my house, and my house runs a 100 amp breaker. So, like, I couldn't, I couldn't install this. I would have to uh, put in a whole new night. Now, if you have a newer house, a bigger, newer house, some of them run on 200 amp breakers and you may be able to get around it. But most people, in order to install this Ford Lightning Pro's charger, you're going to have to probably upgrade your service to like a 400 amp service. That will cost about $10,000 to upgrade your service to a 400 amp service and, and ch um, change out the main breaker and everything. Uh, and then you have to buy this uh, Pro charger to do this. So it would be, I would say for most people, this, this whole setup is going to cost well over $10,000 um, if you want to get this Ford Charge Station Pro. Uh, okay. But with the, uh, with the Aptera, you just, you could get by with just a standard plug that you, ha that everyone has in their garage or even in a parking lot of an apartment. You could get by with that and you would have more than enough range to do everything. All right, so I hope that was helpful for uh, people that haven't had an EV before and didn't kind of understand all the different charging options. And you can see the advantage of the Aptera is that you don't need to, in, to buy more equipment. You don't need to run any new electricity uh, lines. You don't have to install new breakers. You don't have to upgrade the service to your house. Um, you can just plug into a standard plug that you charge your phone with and get 160 miles of range out of that every day and then you can add the 20 to 40 miles a day of, of solar charging that you're going to get um, so that's i think that's a huge advantage of the aptera all right and also i'd like to thank our supporting members uh, we have now four uh, 100 kilowatt level um, supporters there's enoch brian jaron and john and then our 25 kilowatt level members and then our 40 kilowatt members, Curtis, Jeremy, Tom, Dean, Go Climb a Rock, Ademchi, Neil, Uncle George, Don, Paul, Harry, and Paul Ree. Uh, thanks, guys. And then everyone else who's watching. And um, I love reading your comments and responding to them when I can. I find the discussions really educational for me. Um, a lot of you guys um, know a lot more than I do about a certain things. And the comments are very helpful. Yeah, if, you, if any of you guys are electricians, um, please comment about this, about how much these things cost to install, or if you've had it done, how much it costs you to install it. Um, it'll help everyone else out to figure out what the cost of these things are. Um, for me, I didn't have to have anything installed. I paid about 150 bucks to get a level two charging cable, and that works great for me because I don't drive that much. Um, if I got an Aptera, I, I would use that, and I would have 3.3 kilowatt charging, um, which would be more than enough. And if you don't have it, it looks like level one charging is going to be more than enough for the Aptera, which everyone can have with no added equipment. Okay, thanks for watching everyone and have a great day.